A second major mismatch disease, like obesity, is type 2 diabetes. And like obesity, diabetes is also a disease of homeostasis. It results from obesity-related inflammation. It is regulated by exercise and diet. It can be a consequence of poor nourishment as infant or child. And in order to understand the homeostatic mechanism, we begin with the normal regulation of blood sugar. The proximate cause of diabetes is insulin resistance, and that is what regulates the uptake of blood sugar by muscle and fat cells. The glucose transporters in the brain can take up glucose even when its concentration in the blood is low. Uh, the glucose transporters in liver and pancreas only take up glucose when its concentration in the blood is high. Glucose transporters in most other tissues respond to their functional demands, so that privileges energy supply to the brain. However, only the glucose transporters in skeletal muscle and fat respond to insulin, which is produced when blood sugar rises. Because those tissues are the major consumers of glucose, insulin actually controls glucose allocation among all tissues. Now, in reallocation, there are several important effects. The first is that glucose allocation will shift from maternal to fetal tissue during pregnancy. And it will shift to immune cells during infections. So what happens here is that glucose Re, uh, insulin resistance in muscle and fat cells so that they won't take up glucose is allowing glucose to shift from the maternal blood to the fetal blood during pregnancy and from muscle and fat into immune cells during infections. So that is orchestrated by decreasing the sensitivity in muscle and fat and the capacity for insulin resistance is built in to normal physiology, and it's essential for its functions. So this is a good example of building, a, designing a system that has in it a point that's a weak link, a point that becomes an origin of susceptibility. So when does insulin resistance become abnormal? Obesity is causing an overflow of fatty acids into skeletal muscle, and that can trigger insulin resistance by itself. Fat tissue, adipose tissue, also secretes inflammatory cytokines that are triggering insulin resistance directly by blocking insulin signaling in fat, muscle, and liver, and it does so indirectly by blocking lipid deposition in, in fat tissue, which increases the circulation of fatty acids that then overflow into skeletal muscle. So there is a dynamic loop going on here, and obesity can cause more and more insulin resistance. Exercise and diet can combat it. Exercise can prevent and reverse insulin resistance in two ways. It promotes the metabolism ex of excess fatty acids in skeletal muscle, so it removes that source, and it activates insulin-dependent uptake of glucose by skeletal muscle. A diet rich in glucose and fructose, however, can promote insulin resistance. Diet and exercise alone can reverse type 2 diabetes if it's caught at an early stage, and that can be more effective than treating it with drugs. Type 2 diabetes also has developmental and genetic origins. The risk of type 2 diabetes is increased by undernourishment of the fetus during pregnancy and of children early in life. Here is a child that has been starved. Both of those experiences stimulate insulin resistance that can persist throughout life. People also vary genetically for risk of type 2 diabetes, and that's mediated by environmental effects, particularly exercise and diet. So, type 2 diabetes, like obesity, is a complex disease with multiple causes. It's a mismatched disease caused by an increase in insulin resistance in fat and muscle cells. It, its causes include 
obesity-related inflammation, lack of exercise, a diet rich in glucose and fructose, and poor nourishment as fetus, infant, or child. Type 2 diabetes is a disease of homeostasis that's caused by the use of a physiological control system that has adjustable set points that produce vulnerabilities that are exploited by mismatch. Diet and exercise alone can reverse it if it is caught early enough. 